Hello, welcome back to BioWorld. Today, we are going to compare typical animal and plant cells as seen under an electron microscope according to syllabus 2.1 and we are going to identify cellular components of typical plant and animal cells as required in syllabus 2.2. So let's begin. Based on our previous knowledge, we know that animal life and plant life are made up of different types of cells. We also know how to differentiate between an animal cell and a plant cell. This is because plant cells have three major structures that animal cells do not have. They are the cell wall, the chloroplast and the vacuole. However, animal cells have one structure that plant cells do not have. That structure is not visible in this diagram, but it is the centriole. These are diagrammatic representations of animal cells and plant cells. Let's have a look at what these cells look like under an electron microscope. This diagram represents an electron microscope. You can learn all about microscopes in my video titled Microscopes. Now, when we look at an animal cell through the electron microscope, this is the image that we will get. You can see the plasma membrane bordering the cell, a large nucleus and many tiny organelles surrounding the nucleus. Most visible is the mitochondria. When we look at a plant cell through the electron microscope, we can clearly see the cell wall, the chloroplast, as well as the vacuole. Next, we're going to focus on three cellular components found in cells. The first cellular component is the cell wall. It is the outermost layer of the plant cell. Cell wall is not present in animal cells. The cell wall is made up of cellulose fibers. Therefore, the cell wall is permeable to all solutes. The cell wall is also thicker than the plasma membrane. It has a width of 0.1 micrometers. There are two types of cell wall. Let me explain. This is a plant cell where you can see the outermost layer is the primary cell wall. The orange line here represents the plasma membrane and the yellow space here the cytoplasm. The primary cell wall is made up of cellulose microfibrils that are arranged randomly as shown in the diagram here. Now as the cell grows bigger, what happens is the secondary cell wall develops between the primary cell wall and the plasma membrane. The secondary cell wall is also made of cellulose microfibrils. However, as you can see in the diagram here, the cellulose microfibrils are arranged parallelly. Each layer overlaps at an angle of 60 degrees. In this way, you can conclude that the secondary cell wall is much stronger than the primary cell wall. To further strengthen the cell wall, some plant cells add lignin to their cell walls. Lignin is an impermeable form of lipid. This lignin then causes the cell to become a dead cell where the cytoplasm disappears, making the cell a hollow cell suitable for support. Let me explain what happens when plant cells get together to form tissues. The space where the cell walls meet 
between the two plant cells is called the middle lamella. To keep the cells stuck together, a sticky polysaccharide called pectin is used. Now to enable transport of material from one cell to the other cell, we find there are certain spaces at the middle lamella where the secondary cell wall will be absent. So in this way, material from the cytoplasm can easily diffuse into the next cell. That space is called the plasmodesmata. The cell wall is an important cellular component for the plant cell. The cell wall is able to provide physical protection to the plant cell, provide mechanical support to the plant cell, maintain the shape of the plant cell, and also prevent a process known as osmotic bursting. When too much water diffuses into a cell via osmosis, it tends to push onto the plasma membrane. Fortunately, plant cells have this cell wall that will prevent excessive uptake of water and in this way protect the plant cell from bursting. Now, this is all made possible because the plant cell has a cell wall that is hard, strong and rigid. Let's move next to the second cellular component. The plasma membrane is the first layer in an animal cell. It is also found in a plant cell, but it is the second layer of a plant cell. The plasma membrane is mainly made up of a phospholipid bilayer. Embedded in between the phospholipid bilayer are a few different types of proteins. We can also find carbohydrates in the form of oligosaccharides attached to the phospholipid head or even attached to the proteins. Between the phospholipid tails, we can find cholesterol. So the plasma membrane is made up of four different types of chemicals which we will study in detail in Chapter 3. The third cellular component is the cytoplasm, found in both animal cells as well as plant cells. During your SPM, you learned that the cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance. However, now you are going to learn that the cytoplasm actually is made up of some string proteins. Let me explain further. Here is an electron microscope image of the cytoplasm. The black space here is actually the cytoplasmic solution, which we call the cytosol. The blue here represents the nucleus, which is the organelle. And all these green lines are what we call as the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton has three structures. The first is the microtubule, that is the largest structure. Then we have the intermediate filaments. And the finest or thinnest structure is the microfilament. Each of the cytoskeleton is made up of a different protein. The microtubule, for instance, is made up of a globular protein called the tubulin. The intermediate filament is made up of a fibrous protein that has a string-like appearance. Finally, the microfilaments, they are made up of globular proteins, but these proteins are called Actins. They are smaller in size compared to tubulins. Let's start our discussion with the microtubule. 
The tubulin proteins arrange in a helical pattern and because of that, they end up forming a hollow tube. This tube-like structure can actually form, break and reform when needed. Microtubules form the centriole. The spindle fibers that come out of the centriole are also made up of microtubules. Both the centriole and the spindle fiber are necessary for the process of cell division. Now, if you remember, previously we have discussed that the cilia and flagella of eukaryotic cells contain the 9 plus 2 microtubular pattern. Well, that 9 plus 2 microtubular pattern is referring to these microtubules. So you can see microtubules are also necessary for locomotion of the cell. The microtubules are also in the cytoplasm. They arrange a pathway for the movement of the organelles. For example, how would the centriole know the direction to move to the opposite end of the cells? That movement is actually guided by the microtubules. So the microtubules provide intracellular transport. Now let's talk about intermediate filaments. They are made of fibrous proteins that will supercoil into cables. Now the intermediate filaments cannot be broken or reformed. They are permanent structures. Since the intermediate filaments are permanent structures, they provide mechanical support to the cell. And this is very significant for animal cells since these cells do not have a cell wall to provide them with support. Besides that, since the intermediate filaments are fibrous in structure, they have high tensile strength, meaning that the shape of the cell will not change when under stress. Another role of the intermediate filament is to help hold organelles in place. So that is why organelles such as the nucleus are always located in the middle of the cell. The rough endoplasmic reticulums are always located nearby the nucleus because they are actually being anchored to that position by the intermediate filaments. Finally, let's discuss the microfilament. The actin proteins in a microfilament will form a double chain. And this double chain then will twist together to form a helical structure. Now, microfilaments, just like microtubules, can break and reform when needed. The microfilament is located below the plasma membrane. Its position enables it to give both mechanical support as well as tensile strength to the cell, just as how the intermediate filaments functioned. However, since the microfilaments are just below the plasma membrane, they are able to control the shape of the plasma membrane. And this ability becomes very useful in a process known as endocytosis or exocytosis. So in this animation, you can see the process of endocytosis where the plasma membrane folds inwards. And when the vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane and forms outwards, that is known as exocytosis. Another function of the microfilament is during the process of cytokinesis. When the plasma membrane starts to form a cleavage furrow inwards, it is actually with the help of the microfilament. 
Finally, we find the microfilaments are also very necessary for the process of muscle contraction. So with that, we have learned how to compare an animal cell and a plant cell as seen under an electron microscope as well as identify cellular components in both plant and animal cells. I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye-bye.